Hi, good morning, um, Facebook. I just woke up, it's about 6 a.m. So excuse the red eye special. But uh, yeah, up early, do my writing early. I journal every day, almost every day, and I do a little bit of novel writing as well. Um, it's ironic what's going on these days, a lot of bad stuff like uh, suicides and it's been trending lately. Um, yeah, been trending at a weird time, like the new year's coming up, Christmas is coming up and all of a sudden we're dealing with suicides. You know, it's just a weird time to be dealing with this, but ironically I'm um, working on a novel, a book that covers mental health. So go figure. Timing is crazy. But anyway, I just wanted to um I just wanted to get on here and just tell my thoughts about the guy Twitch, Ellen's DJ, dancer, hype man. I just wanted to speak my mind on um yeah, he just had a suicide. He passed away just recently and I just kind of want to Share my thoughts on that and the reaction to it and uh, go from there because I have a lot of experience with my own mental health. Um, I have, do struggle with depression and anxiety. I do. Um, yeah. Who doesn't? <laughs> but yeah, I go through it. It's not just a little bit depression, anxiety. I, I struggled with hard, <laughs> is an understatement, hard depression. And anxiety so since I was I'm 37 since I was 19 years old 19 yeah that's about I'm bad with math y'all so, excuse me and it's early it's almost 20 years something like that yeah it's a lot of time to be struggling with that but anyway I just want to get into real quick on my thoughts on the passing and reaction to twitch it's the whole purpose of this video. Let me see here. I'm going to get into this. First of all, condolences to Twitch's uh, people, his family. I mean, condolences, for real. Um, he's left a big legacy, obviously. Um, but yeah, he, he committed suicide. He took his life, and he was only 40 years old. Had three kids. Had a wife. They were getting ready to celebrate their ninth anniversary. He had everything. Money, wealth, power. On the Ellen show. Fame, everything. You would think. And then all of a sudden, he's, he's gone. And we hear that, uh, you know, we don't we never know what he was going through and this and that. Sure. And then we hear, please, call this hotline, please. If you ever thinking about it, please just call this hotline. <sighs> That's where it kind of, kind of like bothers me a little bit because we hear the same cliche thoughts and prayers. Please call this hotline, please. Thoughts and prayers, please call this hotline. You never know what he's going through. See what I mean? These cliches, little soft stuff. It ain't soft, but it's just like. Come on, we need more. We need to go a little bit further, in my opinion. We need we need to we need to have good mental health structure set up before he even gets to the thought of of maybe taking his life. Cause because who knows how long he was struggling. It could have been he could have been struggling with that that depression, that 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 anguish of that just being tortured mentally for years, for decades, and we don't even know because we haven't had we haven't had a system of mental health help in society. We have we don't we don't have resources that we should. I mean, we in my opinion we should have like mental health clinics where you can literally they want to talk about these hotlines. Nobody really wants to pick up a phone and go talk to a stranger because we don't we can't relate to a stranger. You know, but I'm not saying nobody doesn't pick up the phone and call that, but not many people are going to pick up the phone and call a hotline 
we need to have clinics, mental health clinics, where you can just walk in like walking into a Starbucks to get a coffee and make it for free. They make these suicide hotlines free. Make a walk-in mental health clinic free. Like walking in, like I said, walking into a Starbucks. Should be that easy. I could open the door, walk in, be like, hey, look, I'm depressed. I'm going through this, 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 and this. Can we talk, please? Because I, I'm, I'm getting hot. I'm getting to the line where I don't, I might hurt myself. But no, like we don't have that. We want to, we want to have, let me see your card. Let me see your insurance. Let me see your this. No, I'm going to make you wait for like two, three hours before you even see somebody. No, I'm going to make you schedule a two, three week appointment before you even talk to somebody. We make it all the jump, all these hurdles just to talk to someone face to face. Forget hotline. Forget talking on the phone. I need a face to face. I need to make it easier, easier access. See what I mean? It's just like we don't have this set up in society right now. And it's so ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We have Starbucks on every corner. We have Walmarts on every corner. Why not have mental health clinics on every corner? We're going through a mental health crisis in society, in America, all over the world. People are taking their lives at alarming rates astronomical rates dropping like flies like people in their 420s 30s 40s teenagers are dropping like flies we can't even get to 70 years old nowadays because of suicides and mental health um violence that's going out there people coming to school with guns that's mental health crazy violence domestic violence Murders, that's all mental comes back to mental health because we're not taking care of it because society hasn't given us resources to take care of it. They want to throw us pills. Here, take this, take this, take this, take this, take, get out of my office. Okay, buddy, I need someone to talk to. Can I walk in this clinic and just talk to someone just please just for a little bit so I can just get this off my chest and, and to express what I'm going through? No? Okay. Well, then I'm going to handle it myself. That's what we're, That's what kind of society we're in right now. So it's frustrating. I think we'll eventually we're get... I think, think we'll eventually get to a place where we... There's change because I believe, I'm a believer and I'm a believer in God and Jesus. And I know that... I know that... He's all about change. He's all about making things better. And I know that God will make things better and make a way. He will make a way. But we are way behind. We need to catch up. And we need to put clinics out there. Mental health clinics where we can walk in and talk to someone and, and relate and connect so we can be uplifted, so we can get out of that depression and get out of that anxiety, and so we can like keep on keeping on. But we need to talk to someone face to face, and I don't know hotline. I don't need a hotline. I need a clinic I can walk in and say hello. I'm going through this. You got it. And make it easier. Shouldn't have to pay hundreds and thousands of dollars. Things are tight. Everything's inflated. We don't got the money to pay for that. Make it free. It's a human right. It should be a human right to walk in a clinic and get your mental health taken care of. That is my soapbox, y'all. Yeah. We can do this. We will do this. God will do this. In Jesus' name, he will create change. It, it'll happen. Have faith in him. And he's always faithful. That's it. Iowa.